part of this open day this uh, morning. I'm not going to do any other official um, uh, welcoming because we do have a delegate who will be doing. You'll see the program on your chair. It has changed a bit. So we will now have uh, the executive mayor has uh, tendered his apologies and he has sent Councillor Ngedo Kumbata to do the official welcome on his behalf. Thank you, Councillor, for stepping in. And then <clears throat> we will have uh, Sweet Voices Ensemble entertain us. We will then, instead of a message from the MEC, uh, we will give over to Nick, from uh, the Managing Director of Leeson, Butterman, to come and do an overview as the Managing Director. And then after him, we'll go straight over to the Honorable Premier, who will then um, give his address because he has to be excused shortly after for an engagement in East London. So we have uh, um, sort of changed the program and then we'll continue after that. Uh, sh after the Premier has spoken, we will g give over to the MEC uh, from the Department of uh, Sports, Recreation, Arts and Culture, Ms. Uh, Honorable Ms. Fizeka Nkomonye, and then after that, to our Honourable German Consul General, Ms. Tanya Verheit. So please sit back, relax, enjoy. It is a big occasion. It is a big occasion. We want to say congratulations to listen and also congratulations. It is his wedding anniversary today. So it's, it's a very big day for him as well. You know, so really... Um, Congratulations. Without any further ado, we will call up on Mr. Ngedo Kumbata to come and do the official welcome. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Honorable Premier, German Consul General, leadership of the Listen Bitumen Company, representatives of the provincial government present. I've also noticed that the MEC for Desrak is also present, MEC Komoni, leaders of business. I know you lead them as well, uh, program director as the CEO of the Chamber of Business in the border region. Honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, let me first take this opportunity to express our apology for the executive mayor who could not make it, but he assigned me to represent him to this august occasion. And it's a very important occasion in the history of our city. Let me just give you a hint, Honorable Premier, of why I'm saying this. At some point, I was responsible for issues of infrastructure in this city. And there were some nasty stories that I used to get when I would be told when there was a disaster, when the road, the road has been washed away, you need bitumen now in order to fix our roads, you'll be told that the supplier that we have in the region has run out of the product and you must wait for the supplier to make sure that you are able to respond to the needs of our people on the ground. So now by the arrival of listening in our space, this means we are now going to be spoiled for choice. We all know that uh, we've got a challenge of climate change. Those things just happen. We've got floods that have uh, occurred in our city recently, Honorable Premier, aware of that. And we've got many roads that were washed away. And you'll be told by officials, we don't have the product to respond promptly to this challenge. And I'm saying today, that will be a permanent departure from that history. And we're very grateful as a city. We're deeply delighted and overjoyed to be welcoming you, uh, Listen Bitumen, which is a product of foreign direct investment by the state of Lower Saxony in Germany. We are deeply, largely, uh, we are deep we are, we are deep, we are, our deep delight largely comes from the fact that the company is located closer to where our people reside, which is the Fort Jackson Industrial Park here in Tanzania, the second largest township in the Republic of South Africa. We know, Honorable Premier, in every time you address us as a province, you always made a clarion call for investment to come to our townships, as in Tanzania, Patawith, and we are seeing that response, which is very positive through this foreign direct investment from the lower, German Lower Saxony lower Saxon province. And we're really grateful because this also presents an opportunity for our own local people in terms of employment, 
and as well as our own service providers in terms of people who are running construction companies. Whenever they are called upon to do some work for us, they are not going to say, unfortunately, we can't respond now because the product, we have run out of, product, of the product as a, 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 in, within the region. Speaking at the banquet hosted by the then president of Germany, Roman Herzog, in 1996, the late President Nelson Mandela made the following remark, which I believe is still relevant today, and I quote, as we reconstruct our country, German investment, development aid, and technical cooperation gives concrete substance to our partnership in our development. Germany is our major trading partner and has become one of our main sources of tourism. You are therefore woven into the daily fabric of our economic life, unquote. The cooperation between our province and the state of Lower Saxony remains very critical for the concrete development of our country and its people, and it is therefore crucial for the partnership, for this partnership to be nurtured. This is why we are very appreciative of this investment by Listen Putman. So with those few words, I would like to say you are welcome to our shores. We are joining other giants like your uh, Mercedes-Benz who have been part of our of our city for many years, for more than 60 years. And we've always been a, a very good host, hoping that you're also going to enjoy your, your doing business with us. And we're looking forward to some more fruitful partnership going forward. Thank you very much. You're all welcome. Thank you for those uh, words. Warm welcome, Councillor Nato Kumbata. I also see the Buffalo City Development Agency through Dr. Eldred. Uh, well, here, welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, now we're going to give over to uh, the Managing Director of Lisa and Bitumen, who will do an overview for us of what we've seen. We had a fantastic tour earlier on. I have to say, um, Nick, that I'm so impressed that you have. Uh, even included our our ladies as um, uh, you know to be this is very much a previously male dominated industry and it's great to see that you've employed and empowering even our young ladies thank you so much for that please give him a round of applause thank you very much Giselle. welcome everyone we're just gonna set up I have a bit of pictures uh, for the audience. Okay. Malweni Nonke. Ninjan. I'm also all right. Thank you very much. Uh, but also, herzlich willkommen. We have uh, some German attendants. Igamalam gu Nick. It's uh, Nick Berning. Um, I actually immigrated from Germany uh, in 2013. I was living in Kappa for a couple of years, and now since 2018, I'm here in East London. So, brief overview, where's the investment coming from? I'll introduce you to uh, Liesen Alles für den Bau in Germany, then I'll talk about Liesen Bitumen in South Africa, and our focus and approach while we're here. So the company profile is uh, Leasing in Germany is actually coming from a coal merchant and it was established in 53. It's a family owned business which uh, we try to establish here as well, the spirit of a family owned business, open door policies. It's run by the second and third generation and nowadays uh, it's still going to be called a medium sized, a mittelständisches business in Germany with about 200 employees. Uh, they have extensive product portfolios that cater in the construction industry. Leasen, alles für den Bau, it means everything for construction. And particularly for our pro production line, they have 30 years of experience as a specialized manufacturer of bituminous road construction and maintenance materials. The areas of activities in Germany are bitumen emulsion and specialized bituminous products, the road maintenance and the surface rehabilitation, the so-called contracting, and then the modified bitumen, which goes straight into your asphalt industry, the hot mix plants, how they call them. They also do the ready mix concrete, 
and then construction chemicals, your plasticizers and additives for that concrete. This is just one example of a production plant in, in Germany. It can grow fairly big and as you know we have a bit more space here. Um, Leeson in South Africa. So we've traveled the country quite a bit and um, I always got the feeling that the Eastern Cape was like that neglected little sibling uh, amongst uh, the bigger provinces like KZN or Gauteng or the Western Cape. Um, there's so much potential out here. I mean, like, it's called the home of legend for a reason. And um, actually, it's too much potential. It always felt a bit like home for myself um, because it reminded me actually of the area where I'm from, Lower Saxony, but particularly the, the district which is called Emsland. And when I found out that Le Lower Saxony and the Eastern Cape actually have a long-standing partnership uh, that felt like the cherry on top of it. So coming to BCMM or now Mdanzane is actually you want to be in the heart of uh, the Eastern Cape and in all honesty who wouldn't want to be in the Eastern Cape. So humble beginnings when we took over the property here this is how it looked right at the start. I'm just going to give you some impressions. I'm really excusing myself for the speakers, but you'll get a copy of the presentation. Um, this is how it all started, and then we slowly got moving in, um, in 2018, 2019, a lot of um, construction happened, and we slowly arrived at where we are today. What is the reason bitumen in South Africa? First and foremost, it's, uh, it's, it's people or their people. Uh, these are our people, my colleagues, um, and you hopefully have already interacted with them uh, or most of them today. Otherwise, uh, you'll be able after this official part. We do think local is lacquer. Uh, that's why we do emphasize and always look, is talent close by? And Mdansan is close by. More particular, Unit P is close by, so a lot of my colleagues come from uh, from the areas close to the promise, premises. We believe in honest opportunity, and we leave a lot of space uh, for growth for our colleagues. Um, if they come with the right attitude and grab these opportunities, um, they can easily work their way up. I recently learned something, uh, thank you Liqua, which is called AKA, which is uh, attitude, knowledge and ability. And uh, Liqua told me, look, you can teach knowledge and the ability, but you can never teach the attitude. So that is just most important that people come with the right drive and with the right attitude. Short overview of our products, what do we do? We do problem solving, like we want to prevent the pothole before it appears, we want to repair it if it's there, then we seal the gravel roads, we upgrade existing roads, and we can also help with dust control. So any problems in those areas, our products can help with. The advantages of the products are that they environmentally friendly compared to ordinary asphalt products, um, there's a health and safety aspect, low temperature applications, our cold mix is produced uh, cold when we spray, there's no additional heat applied. Um, it's also cost effective because we reduce the energy consumption and then there's an aspect because of the chemistry behind it, uh, the performance matters. It's an increased stability, durability, flexibility and skid resistance that you need on the roads. Now. I'm closing off and telling you what is our focus and our approach. And there is a global trend of urbanization. Um, roads in municipalities or metros, they are under tremendous stress. But we need the roads because we want the products. It's like the pulse of any economy, the infrastructure. So we do advocate, if it's possible, for preventative road maintenance. Like, let's not even get the pothole. Let's try to fix the cracks in the road before they appear. I've been mentioning it in, in, in our walk, and everyone who hasn't had a walk is invited later on uh, for another one, the degree of technology. 
you can use our products labor intensive or you can have a big machine that does a lot of work but there's make use of the technology where it's beneficial if it's not beneficial there's enough people who will look for employment um, we believe in development developing development of emerging contractors and i just chatted with Lizelle about it earlier it's it needs an effort from all angles the government must be uh, committed and i know a lot of sunrise projects go out like that that existing big contractors they do a skill transfer to new emerging contractors we want to play our part as uh, manufacturers of the road materials we want to share our knowledge we invite for workshops um, uh, to emerging contractors as well as municipalities which is the last point and we had a very beautiful event last year uh, our eastern cape road maintenance in daba at Nlambe uh, municipality that was uh, very nice and now I just want to say thank you for your attention. It's my personal vote of thanks to the speakers, which is um, Premier Mabuyane, uh, the Consul General Tanya Verheid, MEC Fizeka and Komonje, uh, Councilor Ngredo Kumbata, um, and the Executive Director of the Buffalo Borakai. Mm classic uh, Boracay Chamber of Business, Lizelle Maurice, um, and all further government official being here now. And yeah, I did it earlier, but I'm also thanking Umfazi Wam. It's my uh, wedding anniversary today. Thank you all. Thank you so much for that. That is a Mr. Nick Burning, who is also the managing director for Leeson. Uh, and rightfully so, and even uh, Mr. Kumbata uh, mentioned it in his opening remarks, uh, the partnership between Germany and South Africa is a long-standing one. And I think this, uh, um, the opening of this establishment or this open day, or, or what we see here today, this evidence, is further cements the economic impact that Germany has had on our region and on South Africa at large. So thank you so much for those opening remarks. It's wonderful to be part of this occasion. So now we're going to give over, are the sweet voices here in the house? Are they in the house? Super. I um, acknowledge that the Honourable Premier has to be um, out of here by 10.30. Do we have a time, Honourable Premier, for one song from the Sweet Voices? Wonderful. Over to you, sir. Um Zuzwana Um Ninane Na Shukene Nesitan Vasam Um Zuzwana Um Ninane Na Shukene Na Shukene Nesitan Vasam Giso um zuzwa, um zuzwa na um nina, um nina selenda, shukenda, shukenda nesita, dosa. Udala gani fudi, gani fudi, udalo yani udalo yani bete, bete le, bete le masafukane. Udala gani fudi, udalo yani udalo yani udalo bete le, bete le masafukane. Station. Station master, don't forget. Don't forget me when you see, when you see my face again.
Station Master, Station Master. Don't, forget. don't forget me when you see when you see my face again. Utala gandi phoni, utalu yandi betta 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 le masufu gane. Utala gandi phoni, utalu yandi utalu yandi utala betta betta le masufu. We are saying not in our name. Not in our name. Turn up his violence. It's not okay, guys. We are going to dance, Mogo. This is sweet voices and samba. Okay. Isu. Ikombu nilanga Izi nige labuwe Ikombu Councillor Kumbata uh, whispered in my ear that that was an appropriate song for a wedding anniversary. So good choice, Nick. Good choice. 
Yeah. I see, I see uh, Mr. Pakamisa George as well there. He is uh, in charge of tra uh, trade and investment promotion for the Eastern Cape uh, Development Corporation. Welcome, sir. I take note that you're here. So now we're going to just, uh, before I, um, the Honorable Premier said that he wants to be here to uh, be a witness and to hear the Consul General Ms. Tanya uh, speak. So he has conceded his seat first, but before I call you up, um, uh, Honorable uh, Consul, I want to just ask them to play the national anthem as well. Please stand so that we can appropriately welcome our German Consul General and after which we will give straight over to our Honorable Premier. Over to you, the, the, the national anthem. In German one, yeah. such a wonderful occasion. Mm, beautiful. I think Nick was very strategic in the selection of this day because not only is his, um, uh, with the wedding anniversary, a marriage of two cultures, but also today is a marriage of two countries. You know, we're celebrating that. So really, very well done. Consul General, a once again. 
and I promise I will learn more German instead of that one line only <laughs> for the next time you come. <laughs> which means that I have to learn more easy Cossack. Yes. Yeah. And I already told uh, some of you that uh, we are actually going to set up an easy Cossack co course, uh, class, language class for all the colleagues in the German Consulate General, because uh, I would really like to understand more of it and also be able to speak a bit. Like, I'm really impressed how Nick does. Well, Honorable Premier Oskar Mabuyane, Honorable MEC Fizeka Nukumoni, Honorable Councillor of BCM, Liselle Maurice, Nick Berning, Managing Director of Leeson, dear Leeson staff and uh, dear staff of Blue Aqua Projects, dear guests, dear dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, Mulveni, guten Morgen. Uh, it's really a, a pleasure and an honor to be here, and thank you very much for that very warm and emotional welcome. I, I like to hear my national anthems, but I in particularly like to always hear your very beautiful South African anthem. Um, it gives me great pride to be here today at this very important occasion, at the inauguration of uh, a German company, a German South African company here in the Eastern Cape. And I think that very much proves that Leeson, uh, alles für den Bau, all for the construction, is yet another example of how close economic partners Germany and South Africa are. It joins, the company joins the over 600 German companies who are already working here in uh, South Africa and who have not only invested over um, over 6 billion euros right now, which is above uh, 100 billion rand, but they have also created more than 100,000 jobs, which is actually amazing, and I'm very glad to hear that Leeson now also starts with two handful of uh, uh, local employees, and that will, uh, will sum up in the years to come, I guess. And uh, it was really nice to have met already some of your, some of your staff. Thank you very much for that. But it's not, so, not also about investment. It is not only about trade. You know, Germany is South Africa's, actually, it's actually South Africa's German second biggest trade partner with over 15 billion euros, which is about 255 billion rand um, of, of uh, bilateral trade. It is... Um, also about investment, as I already said, uh, like the EU, the European Union, which Germany is part of, is uh, South Africa's most important direct investor. And uh, it was interesting to see at this year's uh, investment conference, the summit in Johannesburg that took place uh, end of March, there were additional pledges of over 30, uh, 350 billion rand in total announced by, uh, by uh, foreign investors and uh, German companies uh, also brought in uh, some big pledges. And you all know, and it was already mentioned, that uh, German companies are in particularly invested heavily here in the Eastern Cape, above all the German car manufacturers um, and their suppliers. Here in Buffalo City, uh, there is Mercedes and Daimler trucks, you all know them, uh, with their several thousand employees. And I had the chance to visit Mercedes earlier this year when, I f when that was my first visit to the Eastern Cape. And um, I was really impressed by their state-of-the-art plant where they produce the new C-Class after an additional considerable investment um, in, the, in a new production line last year. Being here today, I'm again impre impressed this time by a very different type of company, a mid-sized mid company, a family-owned business, and um, I can actually tell you that this is, if you want to say so, the secret of the success of the German economy. It is, of course, also the giants, but it is above all about the medium-sized, smaller-sized companies, family-owned business, who care a lot for their employees, who invest heavily 
and who have a lot of success and sometimes even uh, even are market leaders in their in their special branch and in their niche it sometimes is a niche and um, yeah i think um, Leeson here is now come it has come to stay it is your first investment on the african continent and i think it will improve it, it will contribute a lot to improving the province's um, infrastructure and uh, therefore, as Nick explained earlier, of course, contribute to economic growth. But ladies and gentlemen, this is of course not only, our partnership is not only about economic relations. And I was asked to, to tell you a bit about uh, our very vivid and strong partnership. Sometimes I cannot believe that two countries who are so far away from each other, like it's more than 10,000 kilometers, that is the geographical distance between South Africa and Germany, have such a strong cooperation. It is so broad and dense that it is actually also a privilege and a, and a great pleasure to, to work uh, for this. We not only work together in business, as you're seeing here today, we work together in culture, in science, in finance, in development, in technical cooperation, in the military field, in agriculture, in environment, in tourism, in health, in multilateral fora, in human rights, in so many different projects, including the core of our relations, which is actually the people-to-people -people exchange and Nick, I must say congratulations to you and your wife on your anniversary. You are actually a perfect example of our people-to-people -people dialogue because you are a South African-German couple. And uh, yeah, maybe a round of applause for you. And as you all know very well, the relations on a national level are completed by regional cooperation. Um, for example, the very vivid and strong partnership between the province of the Eastern Cape and the German Bundesland of Lower Saxony. And I'm particularly delighted that Inga Steffen, who represents the Bundesland, the German region of Lower Saxony, is here with us today. But um, above all, I think it is, it is very crucial to mention that we maintain very good political cooperation on the highest level with President Ramaphosa having visited Germany in August last year and um, our former Chancellor Angela Merkel having visited South Africa in early 2020, shortly before the worldwide outbreak of the pandemic and, and we all having to go into lockdown. This year, uh, as we now have a new German government, there have already taken place some telephone contacts between our new federal government and some South African cabinet ministers and I am convinced that we will have a lot of exchange and also physical visits to come up throughout the whole year. There was an intense dialogue of our foreign ministers and diplomatic missions, in particular lately on the Russian invasion in Ukraine. Germany strongly condemns this Russian aggression as it breaches international law. We think that no country in the world can accept that an aggressor invades his neighboring country, which is a sovereign country. Together with our partners and allies, we condemn the numerous atrocities and violations of human rights committed by the Russian armed forces, in particular to Ukraine civilians. The tremendous effects of the Russian war in Ukraine include the broad construction the broad destruction of Ukrainian granaries, tractors, and means of transport for wheat and other grain. This has serious effects on the international food supply. We all start to notice rising energy, fertilizer, and food prices. So I am convinced that we have to work closely together to stop this terrible war. For us Europeans, President Putin's war has demonstrated even more clearly that we have to become independent from Russia's fossil fuels. We will therefore have to move much faster towards our long-standing objective of becoming independent on fossil fuels. Of course, we have to do this also to combat climate change, the biggest global challenge of our century. The work towards an international energy transition 
is also one of the pillars of our cooperation with South Africa. Here in the country, a just and sustainable energy and climate transition is urgent in an economic, financial, social and ecological sense. It offers an unprecedented opportunity for the country's economic development, addressing the indebtedness, ensuring a secure, reliable, affordable, sustainable and clean energy supply. And the province of the Eastern Cape, with its abundance of wind, sun and white spaces, offers unique opportunities to actually bridge this energy gap, reduce greenhouse gases and toxic air pollutions. <coughs> And against the background of our already existing bilateral cooperation in the energy field, South Africa and Germany, together with other partners like France, the European Union, the UK and the US, have developed and successfully launched the Just Energy Transition Partnership that took place in Glasgow last year at the Climate Summit. This partnership encompasses an initial, an initial funding package of 8.5 billion US dollars, out of which 800 million euros come from Germany. And um, this money is, uh, is um, due to for the first three to five years of the partnership's implementation. And that very much is in line with the South Africa's uh, with South Africa's dynamic and ambitious climate change package and uh, your processes and and um, and the uh, um, ambitious climate a action processes at the national and subnational level to reach carbon neutrality by 2050. <coughs> the partners now agree to have a work program in place until the next climate summit last year. And what is in particular uh, important is that in addition to this energy transition, we were closely together with all the stakeholders to address uh, the social implications and place high priority to the just element of the energy transition. But we are convinced that the just energy transition will help our economies to build uh, a sustainable and resilient future. Another important pillar of our cooperation is one that is not only of importance for uh, the country or for our countries as it helps to reduce the rising levels of unemployment, but is equally important for the German private sector uh, or for all the private sector uh, actually and for the companies themselves. That is our work on education. In 2020, Chancellor Merkel and President Ramaphosa agreed and signed an agreement on, an, on a South African-German initiative to promote technical and vocational education and training. And together with many partners, <coughs> we, um, we, we, we from the cooperation side work tirelessly on capacitating the TVET, the training system, and supporting lecturers, management, and learners. Now, the idea behind is that our experience in the dual vocational training um, are, can be implemented in one way or another here as well. And um, that will remain a very important pillar of our, of our um, cooperation. <coughs> With dual qualification measures having been uh, piloted and uh, institutionalized at centers of specialization colleges. And then there, in addition, there are also many public-private partnerships together with our Chamber of Commerce and companies involved um, who establish now colleges or learning boxes in order to train young people and give them future uh, perspectives. And if I understood correctly, that is also what Leeson is very much focusing on, to train young people in order to, um, to give them perspectives and, uh, and, and workplace. <coughs> but there is also another point, another, and then I come to an end, um, another pillar of our cooperation, uh, which is uh, about the pandemic. As you all know, as we all know, for more than two years now, the pandemic has caused unprecedented uh, disruptions on a global scale. And it has drastically exposed global and regional structural dependencies on value chains, 
technologies and patents. And maybe this is especially true for the African continent. Therefore, the European Union, initiated by a German-French cooperation effort, um, works strongly together with South Africa to set up a local vaccine production here. Um, that is not only to continue combating the COVID-19 pandemic, but also with a clear research focus towards other diseases, especially those with a high occurrence in the African continent. Expanding local capacities for vaccine production in general is an essential tool for global disease control <coughs> and prevention. Today, only 1% of vaccines used in Africa are locally produced. And we want to change this. We therefore make important financial contributions to setting up vaccine productions here in Africa. One of them, for example, is supporting Aspen Pharma in Keberga and um, they do the fill and finish of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine in Nelson Mandela Bay and we, uh, we support them financially and uh, we, we, we are convinced, although they are right now a bit struggling uh, because the demand for vaccines apparently has decreased a lot, which is also a good sign because that means that the pandemic uh, has lost uh, um, its, um, its, uh, its dramatic um, effects. Thank you very much. <laughs> but um, we, we are convinced that uh, setting up this vaccine research and production lines will help to further, um, to further uh, contribute to, to the development also of this um, economic sector. To conclude, you see, our cooperation goes from well-established fields to new fields. Is vivid and strong and we can build up on really a very tremendous um, solid basis of relationship we have and we will and should continue to stand together and continue focusing on our common interests. Liesen here in Buffalo City is a new addition to the German South African partnership and I am convinced that they will also strongly contribute to this. So I congratulate you. I wish you all the success, all the best. Thanks again for inviting me. Congratulations to the whole team. Thank you very much. In Thank you so much, um, Consul General Tanya, for that w those wonderful remarks. We will now give over. I am conscious of the Premier, Honorable Premier's time. So please stand. Let's welcome him to come to the podium. I was still warming up uh, for a song. <laughs> I didn't anticipate that it would be just quick like that. Thank you very much, Program Director. Uh, Lizelle, uh, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to see you um, as an economic development activist. Yeah, I've been thinking that uh, you are just on tourism. I can see now that you are jack of all trades and master of everything. <laughs> the acting executive mayor, uh, Councillor uh, Kumbata, representing the executive mayor, Kola Pagati. MEC, Ngomonye. I know Germany is a country for sport, so we've been in Lower Saxon, and I, you know these people by their names, so I can attest to that. The Her Excellency, the German Consul General, the, the Honorable Tanya, the Weyhead, the Managing Director of a Listen, Bituman, uh, Mr. Nick Benning, and uh, congratulations, uh, Nick, to you and your wife. We saw Chile that Uta does a lawako, Ula Pondwe. So we do really appreciate. Uh, so it's a good lesson to those who are not yet married. You can still go to Germany and uh, get a partner. <laughs> it's important. The culture now you see is one. 
we, we really congratulate you on your fifth uh, anniversary. So clearly, the sky is the limit. Government officials, as they were noted here, Director for Economic Development, Director or Chief Director? Yes, Chief Director from Economic Development. Uh, she's also here the, together with the ECTC team uh, and also some senior managers at DESREC. Distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Okay. When I hear about this program, I said there is no way I'm not attending this program because we need to show our investors that we appreciate their investments in our province. So I had to say, prioritize this, whatever program that is there, I must be there, physically. Today we are here to celebrate uh, the arrival of a new investment uh, worth about 36 million by leasing bitumen in our province, particularly in this uh, uh, area of Buffalo City. To us, this is a massive investment as it seeks to address the high unemployment challenge in our province because uh, of the investment by this uh, company. A couple of jobs are created here and that will help a couple of uh, families uh, to have something that they will put um, on the table. I was happy to see that in your team uh, also we've got young, not just young, but women uh, here. It's, uh, I, I like uh, Germans, uh, uh, your excellence, but uh, they trust themselves too much, <laughs> more than anyone else. I always raise this issue uh, with uh, Mercedes, and I always raise it with the Volkswagen. So you will always see, when they think about the CEO, they always think German. Uh, so I think that has been a weakness. So you are really um, disorganizing that arrangement, that German arrangement. Your investment here is bringing uh, that is important progressive uh, dimension. Mm, we appreciate uh, that uh, your company, uh, Nick, has purchased this uh, property here in Fort Jackson. And uh, that is a demonstration of your commitment to our province. You can't just buy if you, you think of a hit and run. So the fact that you have bought it tells you that you are really prepared to be with us for some time. And it's us who must make sure that we support you and uh, you realize your dreams, because your dreams uh, surely will address our number of um, interrelated challenges of uh, unemployment, underdevelopment, and inequality in our province. On behalf of the provincial government and the people of our province, let me congratulate you on this very important investment here in Fort Jackson and wish you well uh, in your future endeavors. This neatly dovetails to the call that we've made as we are currently uh, revitalizing these industrial parks, uh, Dimbaza, uh, Vulindlela, also Barawel. But we've made it very clear, uh, uh, Councillor uh, Kumbach, is that uh, we can put up a new, f new, new infrastructure, fix the roads and other things to here, but government is not going to run these factories. You need the companies, you need entrepreneurs, you need SMMEs to come and open up these factories. So we must create uh, that conducive environment and uh, also incentivize uh, these uh, sort of uh, uh, initiatives. So it's, it's going to be important. The more you incentivize them with this kind of a commitment, the more they are able to create more uh, space to go out and hire uh, people. At some point, we need not only one shift here, and that support from government and local municipalities will make uh, them to have uh, more than one shift and to work uh, uh, over uh, 24-hour uh, shift arrangement. So the government of the Eastern Cape does really appreciate this uh, sort of initiative. Uh, this industrial park was uh, once a hub of employment in this area of Mdanzani, and we have embarked on a program, as I've just said, to revitalize it, to ensure that investors locate in the park to create jobs for uh, local uh, people. It's just strategic. People just walk here. So getting our people here 
along, embracing it, you have security as well. They don't see it as something to, to be vandalized. They see it as something to be protected because they are part of it and it has come uh, to also uh, change uh, their lives. So this kind of an arrangement, I know uh, people who are scared of everything, uh, they don't feel always comfortable to come into areas like this. So when we see you, uh, that kind of commitment, we always believe that this is the right uh, uh, company, uh, properly led, and it should just be supported. In revitalizing, in revitalizing uh, the Fort Jackson Industrial Park, it did uh, funded uh, phase one for infrastructure upgrades, including fencing, which was completed in 2017. For phase two, the application is in progress, and the project packaging been undertaken by KUHA and TBSA for submissions to DTIC. Revitalizing uh, of industrial parks is part of the Eastern Cape Provincial Government's high impact programs with key partners such as DTIC and hosting municipalities in some cases. For the medium term expenditure framework, uh, Department of Economic Development and Environment, Environmental Affairs and Tourism will continue to support this industrial park in um, reading them uh, for investors. So it's important that we make sure that we are actually investor driven, but also always be willing. I always feel bad when investors drop me a text to say we've been around looking for an investment opportunity or we've identified, but we've been sent from pillar to post. Is it to see that or that? You spend months, and I've said uh, you don't need more than a week uh, to sort out issues that rel relates to an investment opportunity. So it is our interest more than the interest uh, investors' interest. So ours is to say secure that because if an investor is not uh, properly uh, assisted, the next stop will be your KZN, will be your uh, Cape Town, uh, will be your Johannesburg. As you said, you are correctly capturing it. Uh, we have said it and uh, we continue saying it that uh, we might be peripheral uh, to the center, but we are the center of the periphery. This province, you are correct, it has been always almost uh, forgotten. Uh, we just agreed with what colonial system and apartheid system did to keep us as a labor sending province. So we are expected to go and develop all other provinces with these uh, uh, brains that we have out of this. And this is a problem that we needed to change. And we must actually uh, disrupt this status quo. It can't continue like this. The potential we have here is huge, uh, as you have indicated. And uh, I'm always quite pleased that when we have the creativity, innovation coming up, uh, our government must drop everything and look at that. That's how the SMMEs will feel comfortable amongst us. The state-owned industrial parks are critical for economic development, job creation, as well as serving as hubs of economic activities across the province. Government commitment in support of these industrial parks is critical in attracting investors. Through support from DIT and the Provincial Economic Stimulus Fund, as well as DTIC, funding of 304 million was allocated for the upgrading of infrastructure in the parks with the resultant of 460 construction jobs and 446 operational jobs created during 2021-2022 financial year. So I want to say to uh, the management here of the company, Lisen Management, uh, you have chosen the right location for your investment because this industrial park um, these industrial parks are in the long-term plans of our government. Our team uh, has shared a lot on the business operation of your company, and I'm confident that you will have a successful business here because we need products that can create durable, tarred roads in our entire province. You have seen it. It's a huge potential on its own. Uh, actually, you need more than 60 billion in the Eastern Cape to get our roads surfaced, if you look at our road network. So that road infrastructure is very critical in actually inducing or stimulating the economic development. So with what we have tried to do, I can tell you. That's why we have said now in these disasters that have just recently hit, the province is more suffering on roads. Everywhere you go, you see a pothole. And as you are saying, that uh, we should not really be having, we should not be allowing this. We should be proactive than uh, to be uh, reactive because we incur a lot of cost because we wait for these two and go to a point where it's difficult for us uh, to fix. Yes, I know most of our roads uh, need serious rehabilitation, but I think with capacity and uh, this kind of intervention around the corner, we should be able to collectively work together to, 
uh, find a panacea to the challenges we have on the road maintenance. I'm sure also all of you, you are aware that the climate change affects our roads and infrastructure through storms and heavy rains. Some roads also need constant repair work of potholes, which uh, cost the state millions of rands. We need products that offer lasting solutions to these challenges, and Lisen seems to have the right pedigree and experience on that. So we, we might not all be talking about a tired road or surface road, but this uh, other alternative of paving or uh, other alternative technology is important to, to be looked at. So with these initiatives, uh, it shows that there's a bit of innovation that is coming up, which will be able to help us to solve some of these problems. The investment by Lisen also signifies our mutual beneficial relationship with the Federal Republic of Germany and uh, particularly the state of Lower Saxony. This year marks the 27th anniversary of our unbroken partnership and this investment is one of the many achievements that have been born out of partnership since 1995. We needed to assess this, economically speaking. Uh, Germany belongs to the first world countries. If you have a partnership with Germany, Volkswagen has been here for almost more than 60 years, uh, Mercedes, the commitment itself, have we really benefited into this to grow our province? I think that's a duty that we have, uh, uh, Ms. Conetti, uh, from an economic point of view, a proper analysis, and what are we not doing right, and what we should be doing right in order to ensure uh, this, yes, challenges of local beneficiations, etc. but those issues are being addressed now. Whether you go to Mercedes, whether you go to Fosfacher, with those uh, uh, the CEOs there have uh, had uh, serious discussions with those companies, so there is progress uh, in that. So 27 years, uh, we should really be a little bit far from where we are because Germans are willing to work here, uh, because they are following these big companies that have well established themselves. Our province is not new to German investment, as I've indicated. The auto sector giants, the VW and the Mercedes-Benz are located here in our province, creating uh, thousands of jobs to our local people. We have also attracted a total of uh, uh, two billion US dollars in foreign direct investment from Germany and created approximately 11,290 jobs opportunities in the province between January 2003 and January 2021. We wish to see more German companies locating in our province as we have abundant opportunities um, in energy, uh, agriculture, ocean, economy, and tourism. We welcome uh, this investment here and congratulate you. Uh, indeed, the province uh, is richer with this uh, sort of initiative that you have just taken, and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That is our Honorable Premier. Uh, Mr. Oscar Mabuyani, and we, I think we should take that song now, you know, as, as you as you depart. So thank you for staying this long with us. We appreciate uh, with your busy schedule. Uh, we will now call on the Sweet Voices Ensemble to entertain us as the Honourable Premier departs, and uh, we wish you a wonderful weekend, sir, as you um, go about the rest of your duties. <laughs> oh Lord my God hands hath made. I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. This is my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, 
and sings my song, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home which voice shall fill my heart and there I bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. Oh, oh, sit it all, and he said, 